countries are like people. Some are boisterous, extravagant, showy. Others present a calm, quiet, and restful exterior. But if it's spectacle, extravagance, and drama you enjoy, then Scotland performs well on the world stage. Consider this. A mountainous landscape that soars skyward and dives down towards a coastline spattered with towering, wind-lashed islands. Cities and towns that declaim a decorous history and a vibrant, contemporary culture. Scotland boasts a strong allegiance to science, the arts, engineering, invention. And of course, its celebrated literature is often accompanied by an equally celebrated drink. Yes, if it's spectacle and drama you enjoy, then Scotland offers a vibrant, thoughtful and inspirational culture. And when it comes to the natural world, this small country offers many surprises. The Scottish Highland region is one of Europe's most spectacular landscapes. Its gloomy glens, towering mountains, and a seemingly unending wilderness combine to present a lowering landscape that is ripe for poetic invention and unbounded imagination. No wonder the written and spoken literature of the country abounds with tales of Kelpies, those shape-shifting water spirits, and the devilish Aik Ushka, that mischievous highland water horse. Such mythological characters continue to populate an imaginary world and fulfill their far-from-playful potential in the imagination of today's storytellers. Animals, too, highlight Scotland's uniqueness within the natural realm of the four countries of the British Isles. Seals, porpoises, and dolphins patrol their inshore domain. While sea eagles and golden eagles soar over land and sea. Rivers are fish-rich and are often home to otters and even beavers. On land, Red Deer and the elusive Capper Cayley and Pine Mart tempt the talents of filmmakers and photographers from around the world. And much to the surprise of many, the Cairngorm region has a substantial herd of reindeer. But there is one intriguing animal that has secured its home in this northern kingdom, an animal that is little known, seldom seen, and rarely filmed or photographed. Indeed, this animal is almost as fictional as the Kelpie and its mysterious companions. It is the Scottish wildcat. There's so much work that you can do, but why did you make this documentary then? Um, it's because it is one of those animals that so few people know about. It's a beautiful native species yeah. and it just it needs our help but yeah. so many people just don't know about it so how can it get help if you don't know and you've got someone like Ian Glenn narrating yes. it as well that's incredible <laughs> that's <good. laughs> yeah that that was a fantastic experience he was absolutely lovely um, and he was really interested in it because it was something entirely different and being Scottish as well he yeah. kind of was really interested I, in I was subject. the first choice to narrate that yeah. I was busy <laughs> and then once you hit post production mm -hmm. and you went through that process, how did you go about with obviously Netflix has a criteria to be like to get onto it? How because it's now been distributed on quite a few platforms, yeah. which is really cool and really good for you guys. But how did you go about doing that? Uh, we actually had a distributor who contacted us, so uh, we had the film listed in a film festival, and he'd been going through the okay. festival's website and had come across us that way. Uh, so we got an email out. Of Blue, so which film festival was that? Uh, that was the Wildlife Conservation Film Festival. Oh, so they're cool. hosted over in New York. Um, Did you um, get to go to New York? Or? No, unfortunately, oh. I've still not been. <laughs> I'm sure one day. <laughs> well, well, my next project is partially based <laughs> in New York. So here's your trip. You got it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, he he contacted us and said, look, I'm I'm really interested in this idea. At that stage, we were, you know, we'd entered the film festival with a rough cut, so we weren't. Um, we didn't have a finished product to show him, but we showed him the rough cut, and and he was, you know, really excited about it and uh, took us on. And it was actually um, 
his distribution that, that made sure that we got Ian as our narrator, Ian Glenn. I know, um, that is a f good find. Yeah, well, my, my writer was quite insistent actually with it being a Scottish subject. Yeah. We had a, a Scottish writer, um, so he's actually a poet normally. Okay. <laughs> that was his, his first foray into to script writing and I think he's been bitten by the book. <laughs> he keeps asking <laughs> me for more projects. <laughs> Especially because the way it turned out was just know, so nice. He's done a fantastic job on the script yeah, and then the script itself was what brought Ian on board you know we, we sent it to his agent he was our first choice and, oh, no way so he's your first and you got your first choice yeah oh, and job, he was yeah. absolutely lovely to work with as well oh that's great no that's really good because he does bring that extra feel to it because yes. I know the shots do it and yeah. obviously location I was I was really nervous with um, meeting him and trying to direct him because I'm used to just doing the narration myself on my short films yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. so you know someone totally of, of his kind of status but he was he was lovely and he was so professional and put me at ease virtually instantly. Um, so it was it was just great to have that kind of well, professionalism aspect to it. No, you know? definitely. No, that was really good.